You know all those guns people have been buying over the last couple of years in record numbers? You know how it's freaked out so many Democrat politicians all over the country? Well, two things are happening. One, looks like people are learning how to use them. Because in this video, we're going to see a bunch of examples of uh, homeowners and property owners stopping the fellas when the fellas try to get into their business with a gun and the homeowner pulls out their gun. But we're also going to remind you of that the same thing happened in Detroit is now happening in Memphis. Remember a year or so ago in Detroit, the new police chief came in and said, hey, people, I just got this job and I used to be a gun grabber. Not anymore. If you've got guns, use them. If you don't have one, get them. Because we cannot protect you in Detroit. Well, Memphis is, is if anything, a deeper and darker and more dangerous and, and dirtier chocolate city than Detroit. We're going to see a video here where the, one of the muckety mucks and the Memphis Police Department says the same thing. Reminds everybody that you have a Second Amendment right. You should use it. Parentheses. Or else we'll get there in time to cart you off. We won't get there in time to stop a damn thing. Let's take a look at some recent episodes of people using their guns to stop some pretty nasty violence from the fellas. Open sign at Sing Lei Chinese Restaurant. I've been waiting on them to pull up. I wait on them every morning. Never turned on Tuesday morning. I felt real emotional. Christina Edwards has worked next to the family-owned restaurant for about a year now. She's sick to her stomach, seeing crime tape lingering in the shopping center, knowing that sweet couple she sees every day faced her biggest fear. It was Monday night, minutes before the restaurant closed, when police say a man with a gun tried to rob the place. At some point, officers say an employee fought back, shooting and killing that robber. The law allows for them to defend themselves. Memphis Police Director Michael Rawlings says the employee will not face any criminal charges. He was simply defending himself. I encourage people not to try to rob businesses, uh, and but also encourage the victims to, to exercise their, their rights to defend we don't make sense. A shared sentiment from police as they told me a deadly shooting early Saturday may have been justified. A woman who lives here asked we not use her name or show her face. She described to me what happened. The garbage man was doing his duty. The guy was about to rob him. The man who was shot and killed was a close family friend, she told me. Detectives are backing up her account of what happened. You see, it was just after 6 a.m. when he tried to rob the man collecting trash. In fact, you can see in this viewer photo a blue garbage truck in the distance surrounded by officers. But the victim turned the tables on the would-be robber, shooting him right here in this parking lot. The alleged attacker did not survive. It was all a shock, especially for his family friend, who didn't know the would-be robber was in the area. He had moved and got married and moved out of town. We're doing good, him and his wife. And he came back? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know, you know, he was back. This woman said what happened is unsettling for many reasons. She told me a man simply doing his job had no other option but to use deadly force. While the man killed leaves behind children. Something. A customer takes matters into his own hands to break up a restaurant robbery in Milford. On Friday, two men went into the Smash Burger on the Boston Post Road, ordered employees and customers into the kitchen at gunpoint. While the robbers ordered workers to open the safe, a customer pulled his own gun on the suspects and chased them out. Police later arrested 21-year-old Roy Sean Ferguson and 22-year-old Greg McLaurin of New Haven. Now, there's another twist here, too. Two of the Smashburger employees were also arrested. Police say during the chaos, Jamal McNeil and Casey DeLoma took some of the cash left behind by the robbers. Both of them also faced larceny charges. Down in Orlando, this was a pretty nasty bit of business. A couple other fellas broke into the home of an old person. Uh, there was a gun battle going on. The old dude got shot. He's going to live. One of the young guys, one of the fellas, got killed. He got shot and killed. Turns out he's a big football player. And he had a rough background, but he had been turning his life around. Uh huh. Down Baton Rouge. This dude pulled a gun on somebody in a car. Guy in the car robbed him of $13. 
guy in the car gets out with his gun. They do a little shooting back and forth at each other, and the bad guy got shot in the face. You know, if it doesn't, if it sounds like I don't have any empathy for people who are shot while robbing somebody else, well, you are 100% correct. I have 100% empathy for the person who could be the victim turning themselves into the hero of their own life and protecting themselves and protecting their family. This fella tries to get into a Houston, a home in Houston, and, uh, he walked in, but he did not walk out. You know, why don't we, and why don't we do my favorite home invasion, home invasion, robbery, shooting story here. Bet you, I bet you it's the favorite of a lot of you guys here, but it's just good to remember what it is. It's just good to remember how the fellas and their lovely ladies are looking at you. And your stuff when you go to work and what you might find when you come home and what you're going to hear from their family if you take care of business. A homeowner fights back shooting and killing a would-be burglar. Police say she shot and killed the teenage thief while he was climbing out of her window. CBS 4's Gabby Fleishman is live at the scene with the latest. Gabby. Vanessa, neighbors tell me that this home has been burglarized in the past, which is why the homeowner set up these surveillance cameras. Detectives say the security system actually alerted the homeowner of the break-in last night. We did get a chance to speak with the sister and the cousin of the young man who was killed, and they say they don't understand why that homeowner had to take matters into her own hands instead of waiting for police. I don't care if she have her gun license, her rights, or any of that. That is um, way beyond law, way beyond. Relatives of 17-year-old Trayvon Johnson are angry. The teenager was shot and killed last night by a homeowner who police say was protecting her property. He was not supposed to die like this. He had a future ahead of him. Trayvon had goals. He was a very funny guy. He was very big on education. He loved going to school. He loved learning. Last night, Miami-Dade police say the D.A. Dorsey Technical College student burglarized a home south of 79th Street near I-95, just blocks away from where he lives. Detectives say the 54-year-old homeowner was alerted of the break-in by her security system. With officers already on their way, she rushed home to check things out, and police say she was armed. She observed a subject exiting the home through the rear. According to detectives, there was a confrontation and one shot was fired. Johnson was pronounced dead at the hospital. Hey, what's wrong with her? She did not have to shoot him. There's no reason that she should have waited until after he walked out the yard to if try to shoot him. If she called the police like... already, then why would she shoot him? Relatives say they don't believe Johnson stole anything from the home, but detectives would not confirm that. You have to understand, you have to look at it from every um, child's point of view that was raised in the hood. How he gonna get his, his money to have clothes to go to school? While the investigation continues into whether the shooting was justified or not, Detectives want to remind the public that, if possible, it's best not to take these types of situations into your own hands. If there's any type of situation that happens or they believe uh, there's a burglary at their home or any type of confrontation, dial 911. Have the police go out and make that confrontation. That's what we're here for. And police say the homeowner is cooperating. She was taken in for questioning last night, but so far no charges have been filed against her. We're told that the state attorney's office is still reviewing the case. How is he going to get money for college? Parentheses, if he does not go out and burglarize and rob people all the time. Okay, that's basically your easiest question of the day. You know what the answer is. You do what everybody else does. You get a skill, you get a job, you work, you show up. That's what you do. You get some nice friends who do the same thing. That's what you do. The secret to not being poor in this country is not even a secret. You graduate from high school. You don't have a kid before you get married. You get a job, any job, stay out of jail, every jail. Don't get addicted to drugs or alcohol. If you do those five things, your sister will not have to stand over your corpse and going, where else is he going to get the money for college? And, and to interject here, that going to college is often just a scam 
another free money scam. It's a student loan scam. Well, to interject that here is really to increase by about a thousand percent the chances of making the black kids angry. 